get your take on oil prices because they've come back a little bit here after yesterday entering a bear market. Iran saying that OPEC may uh, make further oil output cuts. Uh, that, of course, having a factor. Also, investors are looking ahead to inventory data later today. Is that, how critical is that inventory data? Because we talk about this global glut of oil out there. Well, the inventory data in aggregate is important, but let's distinguish between what we get every Wednesday from the U.S. Department of Energy and aggregate inventory data. They're very different things. Global inventories, which are based on global supply and global demand, are absolutely pivotal. But the DOE data is only encompassing one-fifth of the total picture. A lot of people do not, do not fully get this point. It's not enough to just look in isolation at the U.S. because there is an import-export dynamic that can cloud the numbers. What our team always focuses on is the global inventory picture, which admittedly we do not have real-time data on, but it's important to focus on that and to model it properly rather than f uh, exclusively fixate on, on the U.S. All right, let me bring in now, of course, Kirk Hartman of Wells Fargo. Kirk, uh, as we talk about the change at, in the leadership of Saudi Arabia with the promotion of Mohammed bin Salman as the crown prince, does that give you pause in terms of thinking of how Saudi Arabia may change its oil policy and how it's positioned within OPEC? Well, I think it, uh, it's an interesting development. I think it means a harder line in terms of geopolitics, and I would expect that the uh, oil policies of Saudi Arabia would continue. So, in my mind, it, it speaks to me of continuity rather than change, meaning I don't think that the uh, you know, Saudi role in the world will change and will continue to be very strong in terms of uh, OPEC.